رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Rasool Allah Habib Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyihi wa mustafa Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walahu wa ba'd my dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. Today's episode is number 555, 555 episodes by the grace of Allah in the series of Riyadh al-Salihin, which is compiled by Imam Nawawi. May Allah have mercy on him. We're still in chapter in, in the book number 15, Kitab al-Adhkar, and this is the 11th episode in chapter 244, the virtues of dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, and encouraging doing it. Without any further ado, beautiful hadith will begin our program today with a hadith which will distinguish between those who remember the Almighty Allah and those who are negligent of His remembrance. will explain the vast difference between both of them. That is hadith number 1434. It's a sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity. An Abi Musa al Ash'ari, or Radiallahu an, an al Nabi, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, Mathalu al Nadi yadkuru rabbahu, al Nadi la yadkuru, Mathalu al Hayy wal Mayyit, Rawahu al Bukhari wa Muslim. There is another narration though in which which is collected by Imam Muslim Alun. He said, مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَالْبَيْتِ الَّذِي لَا يُذْكَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ That's a huge difference. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the similitude of one who remembers <coughs> his Lord and the one who does remember him is exactly like that of the living and the dead. In the other narration he said, it is the house in which the remembrance of Allah is made and the house in which the remembrance of Allah is neglected is similar to the living and the dead. So at Tashbih, the resemblance in this hadith is as follows. Resembling one who remembers Allah and glorifies His praise to a living person who functions properly, who is physically fit, who is perfectly healthy, whose body is a whole and intact. And a person who is negligent of the remembrance of his Lord is like a dead person. And if I ask you to close your eyes and ponder for one minute, 60 seconds, over what could be the physical differences between the living and the dead. If we think about some of our loved ones, those who are living and now they're dead, so we realize that they're completely quiet. They cannot do anything. They don't have a soul. They don't feel anything. They do not earn. They cannot spend. They don't have a say. They're dead. They do not exist. So when somebody dies, they do not only distribute his inheritance or her inheritance, but also they take their own, his own clothes on the same bed on which he used to die, where he was married and having a beautiful wife, she may take another husband. And another man will lie down in his own bed. And another person would wear his own garments. Isn't it really difficult? I mean, just the thought of losing all of that and somebody else coming over to enjoy your positions and you cannot object, you don't have a say, it's a terrible feeling. 
But we don't complain because we don't have a choice, nor can we stop it. And it is a collateral issue. It's a general problem. So death is a reality that everybody acknowledges, and no one can stop. So that's why we yield. فَإِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ So it's not a matter of a choice. Once death is due, no one can delay it for a moment. And also no one can advance his term or the term or the term of others by a single moment. Okay. So the difference between the living and the, and, and the dead is, is literally everything. I mean, there is no comparison. Somebody who is present, somebody who has an, a full access to function, and somebody who is totally quiet, doesn't have any access to do anything. No comparison. A person who constantly remembers Allah the Almighty is similar to a living person who is enjoying a beautiful life full of activities, earning, spending, family, kids. 24-7 he has, you know, activities. He's productive. And a person who doesn't remember Allah is like a piece of flesh which is dead, soon will rotten, will decay, then decompose, it stinks, and there is no life in it. So what would you choose to do? And uh, based on what do you compare the living and the dead to the person who remembers his Lord and the person who doesn't? We find in Surah Al-An'am, the cattle, uh, number uh, 122. Again, Allah gives the example of the living and the dead. A person who was dead, dead because he was living in disbelief, in denial, he was agnostic. He didn't recognize who is his Lord and what is the purpose of life. Maitan. فَأَحْيِنَا So we gave him life. We made him monotheistic. We made him recognize what is the purpose for his or her living. Not only that, and we provided for him nuran, light with which he is able to walk because he has light to walk among people can he be compared to a person who is still living in darkness doesn't come out of it whatsoever of course not there is no comparison <laughs> yet the disbelievers think that they're okay and the greatest proof that they're wrong is look at the number of suicide people who take their lives among the people who totally reject God reject the concept of lordship and a creator or a founder and they believe that they came here by accident they are the people who commit suicide the most who take their lives most even though they are located in countries where they have the highest lifestyle, the highest earning and salary worldwide, the fanciest life in addition to no restrictions. He or she wants to have sex at any time with any person, even a family member, no restriction because there is no God to say good or bad, lawful or unlawful. Whatever is good is whatever they like. And whatever they don't like, they will reject it. And they will consider it no good. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ A person, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ أَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ When a person takes his whim, so his whim becomes his God. He doesn't have a legislator other than his hawa, his desire, his lust. I like it, then it's cool. Do it. You may think that those people are happy because they don't have do's and do not do's, halal and haram. You know, we have a whole program called Ask Huda, and in this program and in other programs, people call to ask about lawful and unlawful, and you find bank manager. 
She quits her job after 20 years working in the bank because she heard during the program that working in a conventional bank and earning out of that is a lawful. So she quits the job. Are you crazy? No, actually I was dead and I became alive. Because I know that no matter how many years I survive, how long I live, sooner or later I'm going back to him. And he's going to ask me and recon me whether I have followed his instructions or not. People would think this lady is crazy. This man is out of his mind. He leaves such a position after 20 years. Well, I'm leaving it because I recognize that the one who created me said, too bad, do not do that. So he knows best. And I'm not worried about my provision because I believe him that he is the sole provider. He will take care of me. I'm not lousy. I'm not lazy. I'm not handicapped. I'm looking for a lawful source of income. I'm just giving one example. So in this case, people who believe in God and who remember him and who praise him frequently and celebrate his praise, that brings life to their hearts. It makes their life beautiful. It makes their life full of purpose and full of hope. So they endure the calamities patiently and they endure them with pleasure because they know that God is testing them. They know that they will be rewarded and compensated for that. Nothing happens for no reason. Nothing happens as an accident. Nothing happens without his permission and without his leave. So those who constantly remember Allah by the tongue, by the heart, and by both are truly alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Surah Al-Hash, Ayah number 19, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Don't you be like those who have forgotten about Allah. So they, نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Allah is warning us. Don't you be like those who have neglected God. Ignored God. So Allah made them forget about their own selves. About their salvation. About what is beneficial for them. What is good for them. So they chose their own destruction by their own choice. By their own hands. Because they don't have the divine guidance. لا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون. Such are the rebellious ones. May Allah protect us against such faith. شيخ الإسلام. May Allah have mercy on him. Says, الذكر للقلب كالماء للسمك. The concept of the remembrance of Allah for the heart of the believer is similar to the water for the fish. Can the fish survive out of the water for long? No, of course not. When we catch fish, by the time we go home, it's less than an hour, it's dead. Why? It's out of the water. You want to keep it alive, then put some water to maintain its life. A believer who doesn't remember Allah feels like he's congested, he's suffocated, he's going to die. So the remembrance of Allah is like for the believer is like the water for the fish. You cannot forget about it. If it is interrupted, he's dead. Also, Ibn Qayyim, his student, may Allah be pleased, with both of them said, Inna lil qalbi qaswah, la yudhibuha illa dhikrullah. The heart sometimes gets very hard and harsh. It becomes like in a shell. Nothing dissolves this hardship better than and other than the remembrance of Allah. Whether in the form of the recitation of the Quran, the form of the supplication, in the form of the praises, the glorification and declaring the oneness of Allah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. So all the various forms of the remembrance of Allah brings life to the heart and it makes it very distinct 
from the heart of the person who does remember Allah, he is typically dead. Even though materialistically and physically he's walking, he's functioning, he's eating, he's drinking, but he's dead. Does he recognize what is good for him or for her and what is bad? And at any moment they can take their lives because it is not worth it. While others think that they are enjoying everything, but in reality they are not enjoying anything. They suffer depression. They take their lives more than anybody else. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if anyone is experiencing any worries, any grief, any hardship, then he recites the following dua, Allah will alleviate his pain, will remove, will remove his sorrow and grief. Um, Allah ma'ani abiduka wa binu abidika wa binu amatika nasiyati biyadika maadin fiya hukmuk to the end of uh, the hadith. Another beautiful supplication. Allah ma'ani a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajizi wal-kasal wal-jubani wal-bukhl wa a'udhu bika min ghalabati al-dayni wa qahri al-rijal. You say it, you say it, subhanallah. You find immediate removal of your worries, of your depression, which is not the clinical depression, of course. Okay, so when you are constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're alive and not just alive, not a typical life, you are enjoying your life. And those who do not, they are living in darkness. One day, um, when I was driving from one city to another, and I was coming to the city, it's a long drive, about more than a couple hours. So there was a policeman. Uh, he was a pedestrian, so he was pointing to any car uh, to pick him up. So I thought this is a highway, so I stopped, I picked him up, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Cairo, I said, jump on. So I took him with me. It was time where I was reciting my other car. I know many of these guys are not really straight. I mean, they do a lot of bad things. So I raised my voice with the adhkar, with the recitation of Quran. I didn't say a word to him, other than the fact that my wife has prepared some breakfast for me. So I shared it with him. They didn't ask him which police station you work at, which post, so that we can get some benefits. I didn't talk to him at all. I just kept on reciting my adhkar. Then as I was reciting in an audible voice, he started weeping and crying. I was happy. Then he said, pray for me, Sheikh. We do a lot of bad things. We do terrible things. So I was very happy I stopped to pick him up. I was very happy that, uh, that Vic, in an audible voice, touched his heart and is softened his heart. I did pray for him, and I gave him a few advices. Maybe, maybe it will be a turning point for him. This is just to reassure and confirm the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim. May Allah have mercy on him when he said, Sometimes the heart gets very harsh and hard. Nothing can dissolve its hardship other than the remembrance of Allah. That applies to the house. To the house. Many people call and say we have jinn. We have ghosts. We have whatever at home. A chief judge is calling me and saying that my wife and my son and, and uh, another person is saying... Can you do anything remotely? We're willing to pay you any amount. Well, I don't charge for that. But I can advise you one thing. When was the last time you guys recited Surah Al-Baqarah at home? No, we don't. That's why. So, such people would prefer, because this is their attitude in life. Just how much? How much? Tell me how much. If you can fix the problem, I will pay you. I will swap the car. I will write you a check. <laughs> it is not like that. Sir, he can earn it. He can solve the problem on your own. He can fix your wife. He can fix your kids. He can fix your family. You know, it's been a while since last time you prayed or recited Quran at home or you made dua. Do you know anything about the morning and evening of car or whatever? Not really. Okay. But he doesn't want to be uh, religiously committed so that he will not be labeled as fanatic or as extremist. Okay, they live in darkness. Live in darkness, suffer, whether your ghost, your jinn, your uh, depression, without being on Allah's side, you're a loser. It's as simple as that. So what to do? I advise them. 
Can you just get your family together and recite Surah Al-Baqarah at home? It will take an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, wow, that's a lot of time. Can you do it for us? No, I'm not going to do it for you. You're having the problem, you got to do it yourself. He said, I'm a slow reader and it will take us forever. I said, let it take forever. You're suffering forever. You want a medication to take its time, an hour, two hours, three hours. Why not? They don't want to. But the solution is in the remembrance of Allah. مثل الذي يذكر الله والذي لا يذكر الله كمثل الحي والميت. The similitude of a person who celebrates the praise of Allah and one who doesn't is similar to the living and the dead. May Allah bring life to our hearts. Now, hadith number 1435. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يقول الله تعالى أنا عند ظن عبدي بي وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منهم متفق عليه أبو هريرة may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said Allah the exalted says I am as my servant expects me to be wow beautiful how beautiful and I am with him whenever he remembers me if he remembers me inwardly I will make mention of him in worldly and if he remembers me in an assembly I will make mention of him in a better assembly in the assembly of the angels this is what we call it hadithun qudusi hadithun qudusi means it's a hadith which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is quoting what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. What the Almighty Allah is saying. Well, if this is the case, then it must be Quran. No, no, no brothers and sisters. It's different than the Quran. Big difference. So there are many hadith which are categorized as Al-Ahadith al Al-Qudusiyya. The sacred hadith. Why? Because in such hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, the Almighty Allah says, he quotes the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's called hadith in Qudsi. But we cannot recite it in the prayer. Why not? Isn't it the word of Allah? It is not the typical word of Allah in a sense. Allah has inspired that to the Prophet and he phrased them. So it is unlike the Quran, which is the words, the letters, the vowels, the tajweed is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-hadith al-Qudsi can be narrated by the meaning. When you say, you know, in, in one hadith Allah says what it means. The Quran you cannot. You cannot quote it by the meaning. A book which compiles al-hadith al qudsi in case that you are in a state of janaba, it is not forbidden to bear it, to touch it, to hold it with bare hands. The Quran, no. You cannot touch it with bare hands in a state of janaba, particularly the measure impurity, and so on. So in this hadith of Qudsi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa quotes the Almighty Allah as saying, and Allah is saying, I am indeed. I am exactly as my servant expects for me or thinks of me. Explain. I will explain. Somebody expects from Allah forgiveness, pardon, and mercy. He will get it. Allah will deliver. Somebody expects Allah will not help him, will not forgive him. He will not find a job. He will not prosper. This is what you will get because you underestimated Allah the Almighty. Okay, as you expected. But does it mean that a person who is doing terrible and expects Allah as oft forgiven and most merciful, to forgive him, to pardon him, and to admit him to Al-Jannah? Of course not. Of course not. A person who is a good person, a righteous person, and we're all human beings, we do mistakes. Along with doing good deeds, he is anticipating Allah to pardon him, to
to forgive him, to accept his deeds, and to wipe out his shortcomings and his mistakes. He anticipates what Allah promised, but he's working. He is doing an effort. He's doing some work. So he will get what he is anticipating from Allah. But somebody is involved in an act which is categorized as a major sin. Somebody is breaking into somebody's house. Somebody, some police officer, some military man is oppressing people, hurting civilians, uh, making their life miserable and says, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. I will go for Umrah next Ramadan and Allah will take care of that. You're the most stupid person ever. Because Allah is fully aware of what people do. He delivers to them what they deserve. إن الله لا يظلم الناس شيئا ولكن الناس أنفسهم يظلمون. The Almighty Allah doesn't wrong people on earth. It's people who wrong themselves. An oppressive ruler, a governor or officer who forces Muslims in the Friday prayer to make dua for him. So everybody makes dua for him by their tongue, but their hearts are saying otherwise. Then in Hajj, he's always there. In Umrah, he's always there. People are living in a little tent. He's having, mashallah, a curious room in Mina and Ara. All of that is in vain. Why? Because you need to fulfill your duty. You need to be, in order to be optimistic, in order to have husnu dhani billah, you have to do your homework. And while doing your homework, you anticipate Allah to accept it from you. You anticipate from Allah forgiveness and uh, overlooking your shortcomings. All of that is praiseworthy. All of that is good and you'll get it. And you'll get it. On the other hand, a person who thinks bad of Allah will get what he thinks. So it's a sin. If a woman says, so long as I'm wearing hijab, no one would ever propose to me. Because where I live, people go for the beauty. So I have to wear those tight jeans to show my bottom. I have to wear the tight blouses. I have to wear a full makeup and put the extension eyelashes. I have to wear a wig. I have to open my v-neck so that people see my beauty. If I don't do that, I will not get married. This is somebody who thinks evil of Allah. Do you think Allah would abandon and will leave alone his awliya? Of course not. So he promised, because you are being obedient to him, your risk will be delivered right to your footsteps, your doorstep, uh, right to your mouth, whether it's a husband or a job or an education or whatever. But if you think that while disobeying Allah, you'll be eligible for all his promises to the believers, that's also so uzzani billah. Somebody doesn't want to go for Jumu'ah prayer because he thinks, mashallah, we have a lot of customers, Sheikh. If I say closed for the prayer, I would lose them. This is somebody who thinks bad of Allah. He thinks Allah will put him down, will let him down, will deprive him from some profit that he was going to make if he were to open during the Friday prayer. I hope you understand the relation between husn uh, thinking good of Allah, uh, expecting and anticipating good from Allah while working for it. Okay? وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي And that is the catch and the reference in the hadith. I am with him so long as he remembers me. So you want Allah to be with you? Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم أستغفر الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت على كل شيء قدير and whenever you remember Allah in private Allah سبحانه وتعالى will mention your name in wordly to himself if you do it in public like in a حلقة or in teaching like that Allah is talking about us right now brothers and sisters he is making mention of us to Jibreel, to Mikael, to Israfil, and to the rest of the angels. That is an assembly which is definitely better than our assembly. It's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes. Keep your time busy with Istighfar and the remembrance of Allah. Stay tuned. Rasulallah,
رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back as you all know, our phone numbers and the contact informations would appear on the bottom of the screen for your reference if you're interested to give us a call in this segment, insha'Allah. Uh, I think we have some callers. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fawzia from the UK. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Brother Salah? Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Fawzia. Go ahead. Excellent. Brother, my first question is, uh, you know, sometimes I pray in the night by having intention. I sleep in the night by having this intention that I will wake up before Fajr for uh, uh, some tahajjud uh, and to, to do with her. But actually, sometimes I, with that intention, when I wake up, it's, it's even Fajr is finished. So, uh, so I had to obviously do Qadha for everything. So I wanted to know the order. Is there any order do I have? When I do Qadha of the Salah, like first, first, and then Sunnah, and then Witar, or I can okay. do in any order. And okay. uh, my second question is, uh, one of my relatives, actually, her husband has divorced her by saying three words, uh, talaq, 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 in a go. So, uh, and she's pregnant. So, is there any chance she can get back? And on top, she's saying, she doesn't want a child because she heard that under three months, I think under four months, 10 days, there is no breathe in the child. So so it can be aborted. So if you just let me know these things, please, that would be very helpful. Sure. Thank you. Sister Fawzia from the UK. Um, if a person didn't wake up for Fajr and overslept, then they should begin by praying the Fajr prayer. So if they woke up after sunrise, in this case, they should pray the sunnah first, the two rakah, the sunnah before fajr, and then also make up the fajr prayer afterward. And if it is more than one person, they can also pray in congregation, and the reward for the congregational prayer is still greater, even though it is qadha. Then Aisha radiallahu anha narrated in the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he would oversleep or whenever he was sick and he wouldn't be able to pray at night, he used to make up his night prayer during the daytime between the duha, the forenoon prayer, and until about 20 minutes before dhuhr time. So you can pray the night prayer which you intended to pray at night and you didn't wake up, you can make it up during the daytime. But obviously pray the fajr first and it's sunnah, then afterward, if it is after sunrise, you pray whatever you are planning to pray of nawafil or tahajjud during the daytime. But there is no witr in this case. The witr prayer only if you are praying at night. But during the day, it will be all shafa, two by two. All the prayers will be in even. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Maya from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Maya, go ahead. Um, I have a question about the, the four madhab. Um, um, I don't know how to put that question. I mean, we have the Quran and the Sunnah, so how, why are we going by, you know, some countries, say the Maliki or, you know, and so on and so forth. So how do we know which school of thought we're supposed to be following if we already have the Quran and the Sunnah? Okay. Thank you, Sister Maya. And, uh, That's an interesting my, question. My, sorry. I have a second mm. question. Yes. Like uh, if some person are going through a tough time and they don't want to talk anymore to anybody to realize their problem because apparently, like, you know, people won't help you. Um, Allah only can help you. Mm. So is that going to extremism, thinking that only Allah can help so I don't have to talk to, I don't want to talk to anybody? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Maya. I got your questions. 
Sister Fawzia from the UK, her second question was concerning a friend of hers. Uh, her husband divorced her three times in the same sitting. Any divorce questions? Uh, you bet the same person who uttered the divorce should be the one who asks the question because there could be some other circumstances that you are not aware of, Sister Fawzia. So we can take the question from the wife or from the husband. The husband is a priority. He's the person who said the word talaq or texted the talaq or divorce. But any other person, he just heard and it was a narrative that he is, uh, you know, transmitting. So I would abstain from answering the question pertaining to your friend as it, as it was phrased. But generally speaking, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, who opposed the different madhahib, that if a person utter divorce three times in the same sitting, such as saying you were divorced three times, or divorced, 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 that counts as one. There is a long dispute between the ulama and the scholars, and I guess that uh, would take us to Sister Maya's second question, or first question actually. Why are there different madhahib? Uh, we know for sure that Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, إِذَا طَلَّقُتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةِ If you ever divorce women, so divorce them and receive the three periods. فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةِ We know that Allah the Almighty prescribed how we should give talaq. But some people do otherwise. So they say talaq twice in the same sitting or thrice in the same sitting. So now we have to resort to the sunnah. What does the Prophet ﷺ say in this regard? So as the Prophet ﷺ asked Mu'adh when he sent him to Yemen as a judge, he said, Ya Mu'adh, whenever you are going to those people and judge between them and rule them, how are you going to judge between them? He said, the book of Allah. He said, what if it is something that is not in the book of Allah? He said, then the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah but people keep doing things and inventing things. So there are too many business transactions nowadays which were not available back then. They didn't have stock markets. They didn't have uh, online trade. So these scholars have to make ijtihad in the light of the available evidences, Quran or Sunnah. And if there is not, then they have to come up with uh, a solution in the light of something similar to it or if there is no precedence whatsoever, ishtihad to come up with an answer. So that ishtihad may be different. All of that is a sign of mercy in this deen. Allah wants us also to use our intellect, use our brains, not to be uh, dumbfounded, not to be like sheep and cattle. Okay, this is what he prays the human beings for. But again, it is within the boundaries of the revelation though. So the different madhahib are not different religions. And that's why studying the biography of those imams and the madhahib will make you better understand and comprehend the concept of what is madhab. Why do we have different madhab? Okay, and we do have a program. It was filmed more than 10 years ago. The presenter was my friend, Dr. Hatim Al-Hajj, and it's called the evolution of fiqh. Please look into uh, the program. As far as divorce, and um, if, uh, you know, if she's in, not interested during, because the divorce happened during the pregnancy, it's effective. Pregnancy does not prevent divorce from taking place. But abortion, getting rid of the baby, once you run the test and you know that you're pregnant, is haram, and it's a major sin. For any reason, only if you're told that, you're going to die if you continue the pregnancy. In this case, we have to do the miscarriage, to do the abortion. But because you broke up with your husband, you kill a baby, a fetus, that is not permissible. Islam doesn't permit that. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, Akhi Ahmed, go ahead. May Allah bless you and the whole of the team, the TV team and keep you steadfast Amen. up to the financial burden. I love Amen. you all for the sake of Allah. Thanks to the team. Same, Allah. To you. same my to question, you. I have, I have three questions. One of them is my question with a company that is interest-free for cards 
her brother got a car from there and has to pay monthly installments into her bank that is permissible. Is that permissible? So uh, I understand that you said somebody is paying a uh, mortgage. Um, but it's interest free. Interest free. Okay, cool. Beautiful. And what is mortgage which is interest free if it is financed by owner, Akhi Ahmed? So if the owner of the house, a company for innocence, said, you know, we know that you cannot afford it, to it's pay. It's not a mortgage. It's not a mortgage. It's for a car. For a car. Okay, financed yeah. by owner. So the owner of the car, let's say, the car worth 25000 You You put now 15000 down payment. And uh, I will sell it to you for 30000 even a higher price. But the price is fixed from the beginning. That is permissible. Okay. What makes it permissible? The price is fixed. I know how much I would have to pay this car worth that much. No interest is involved. So in this case, it is permissible. Okay? Okay. I have uh, another question. Why not? Go ahead. How can I stay away from bad company? Stay away from bad company. So how to stay away from bad company? By staying away from bad company. Many cases like that are being presented before me and say, you know, close your accounts on the social media. Pop up the SIM card on your phone and flush it in the toilet. Get a new SIM card. Get a new phone number. So when those people show up at your doorstep and they ring the bell, you know, can you see it is one of those guys, don't open the door. I'm not here. If you're serious about it, then you got to remember the story of the murderer who killed 100 people. When he finally was rightly guided to a, a true scholar, and he said that I've committed 100 murders, I've killed 100 homicide, 100 people, would Allah still forgive me? He said, yes, Allah would forgive you if you're sincere in your repentance. Show him you're sincere. How? You got to leave your hometown. Why? Because if the people in this town let you kill 100 people, then those people are wicked as well. So the scholar was very intellectual. He said, okay. So he said, you have to leave. And we know the rest of the hadith that the man was serious and he was sincere in his tawbah. And that's why he wrapped up and he took off. And on the way he died, and we know how the angels disputed over his soul to take his soul to Jannah or to Nah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah sent an angel disguising as a human being to judge between them and said, measure the distance between his body and his hometown versus the distance between his body and the new town to which he was migrating. To whichever one he is closer, that will determine his fate. So in reality, he was closer to his hometown. But Allah the Almighty ordered the earth to expand the distance between his body and his hometown and do the opposite in respect of his body and the new town. And this is how you send to heaven. Why? Because if you're serious in your repentance, you got to sever all, sever all your relations with the bad company. That is actually a true proof you're sincere in your tab. Brothers and sisters, let's take one more call and we'll wrap it up. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from the USA. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm calling. I have one question, and my daughter have one question. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Um, yeah, is a is a husband that ask a woman to to look for a house. You know, in the United, you gotta have you gotta have a certain kind of credit and other stuff. But he still don't pronounce a, a, a divorce. So the woman called for for cooler and move out, or should she just move out and wait for him to, to call for divorce? Because the marriage is up to that point. And again, I, 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 I need counseling if you have it. Yeah, we do online counseling, though. Yeah. Uh, you can arrange with the... Uh with the brothers in the control they can arrange that as far as divorce if he takes it back and he asks you to come back to his marriage life before the idda is over then you're still married to him if he waits until the period uh, the three periods three months or the three lunar months have elapsed then you're officially divorced 
And this is only after the first and the second divorce. Your daughter's question. She's coming. Uh-huh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is your good name? Huh? What is your good name? Um, I said Banora. Nora? Banora. Banora. MashaAllah. Okay, Banora, go ahead. What do you have in mind, Banora? Um, uh, why did um, um, Prophet Adam's son kill the others? That's a tough question, trust me. Well, I, I couldn't go to his brain, but I can tell you that out of jealousy. Jealousy makes people kill each other. Jealousy makes people envy each other. Jealousy made Satan actually refuse to bow down to Adam. And he was expelled out of heaven. So jealousy is a terrible sin. This is what I can think of. Okay. Thank you, Banura. May Allah bless you and your family, brothers and sisters. Um, keep doing the good deeds. And if we fall short, if we commit sins, we know what to do. We say, Astaghfirullah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and give his best religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price